big time. Drinking, sniffing, everything, smoking, heavy smoker. Tall, white as they come, string bean man, flamboyantly gay. And we did in fact call him Damien at times, but it was all love. Like we love Damien. He was the best. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, coming hot off the heels of the souvlaki video, I gotta use these up, basically, is what I'm saying. I did a little pre-toast on the bottom, got them nice and crisped up, but I looked in the fridge, I had some things, I had a chicken breast I had to use, and then other items, and we're gonna do a choose-your-own-adventure flatbread pizza type thing with these ingredients here, and I know it's gonna be amazing. I already know. But I'll tell you why in the video, because I've kind of made this before. It actually used to be, well, I'll tell you in the video. All right. Okay, I had a single chicken breast I had to use up. I cut it down into topping size, bite-sized pieces. Little bit of oil. We want it crispy. We're making crispy chicken. A little tossy toss. And then we're coming in with a light cornstarch coating. Another tossy toss. Medium high fresh heat oil into the pool we go. Crispy chicken pieces achieved. Best attempt to strain off into a bowl. Touch of salt, a little pop. No one likes a not salty breast. Simple from here, well, this whole thing has been simple. It is simple, that's the point. It's just a simple meal. But I have myself a Sweet Baby Ray's infused <laughs> with ketchup and uh, a little bit of hot sauce. So just like a uh, kind of sweeter, spicier barbecue base sauce. But that's what this is, basically a barbecue chicken flatbread and or pizza kind of thing. And uh, yeah, that's what's up. I love it. We'll talk about more later how this all came to be. All right, I have these slices of Baby Bell cheese for some pulley melt. This pizza is going to be, pizza <laughs> is going to be featuring three cheeses. So we got that and then we have our Shreddy Cheddy, which is the fine grind. You guys know I like that fine grind cheese. Then this right here, this is the piece de resistance. This is what makes the pie. This is what makes this amazing. If you try this at home, exactly how I make this, you're gonna be like, okay, wow, that's great. But also you're gonna understand that goat cheese is the VIP. It is what makes an extremely delicious pie. So goat cheese is the crucial ingredient. And that's what that is, chevre. That's French for goat cheese, thinly sliced. Red onion, caramelize up nice as it bakes. Now here's where I'm conflicted, but I am gonna go with the chicken so that it melts into the cheese and finds placement in the cheese. However, I am worried about being that it's already crispy and cooked that it might crisp up and burn a little further, but we'll see what happens. This is now trial and error with this part. Okay, so we still have two ingredients that have to go on, but after because I want one to be fresh and one will burn. So for now, this is how they go in the oven. Okay, y'all, two beauties to the oven. I'm gonna toss them in at like 350 for, I don't know, until it's melty because really they're already crisp on the bottom. I pre crisp them. So we just need them to melt, essentially. All right, it's the remix to ignition, pop and fresh out the kitchen. Look at that, there you go. A cheesy, delightful flatty. Flatty. All right, y'all know me, still the same OG, just a bit low key. Crispy onions, of course, <laughs> you guys had to know it was gonna have crispy onions on it. On something like this, anything barbecue sauce based, you always gotta have the crispy onion aspect to it. This is basically chicken pizza or flatbread featuring onions, various formats of onions. Cause we got the red on there, but then we're coming in with the fresh, Green as well. A for decorative, but B for bite, right? That's what B stands for sometimes. B for bite. This is what you do. Do this. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Little star. All right, I'm gonna leave the other one traditionale, but for the sake of editing and such, I am gonna do one, this one specifically, 
with a ranch drizz finish. And that's it. A delicious chicken barbecue onion flatbread pita pizza, whatever you want to call it. The other one we're gonna not ranch and uh, meet me in the dark where I have a floating head and we eat and tell stories. Okay. I multiple cheese <laughs> featuring chicken and many onion variations, pizza and or flatbread. We don't really know what it is, but it's something like that. Anyways, before we do anything more, we must. <laughs> Papa. We're papaying again these days. We're maybe bringing back. Oh, there's a snowmobile. <laughs> Put him front and center. But we got, uh, I just went to the, uh, like the bulk, the Whole Foods place today just to have a look around. And, uh, you know, I was like, I haven't had a diet Dr. P in quite some time. So we must pour. And we do. This used to be the standard on the channel. And uh, we went away from the diet Sody Pops for a little while. But I uh, said to myself, you know, I haven't had a, a fridge stocked with a nice Diet Dr. P in quite some time. So I figured we, uh, we load her up with 12 in the fridge there. And, uh, you know, we have a couple pour-ups. And this is reminding me of back in the day when I always said, Diet Pop Soda fizzes up forever. It's like the most arduous, a word I'm liking lately, arduous process. It just, you know, you got to keep going up and going down and going up and going down. Going up and going down. You know what I'm thinking about. <laughs> thinking about riding a pogo stick. Not reverse cowgirl sex. Okay. All right. Let's get into her. Look at that. It's a beautiful looking whatever it is. We don't know what to call it, but it's beautiful. And I already know this is amazing because I used to make this at Eastside Mario's. My first job when I first moved to Toronto. And, uh. This used to be a, a go-to end of the night meal for me before I went home. So let's have this bite and we'll talk about my East Side Mario's experiences. It's perfect. Such a good such a good creation. The richness and the tang from the goat cheese is what makes it. sweet heat from the barbecue base and then the cheeses the fattiness and then you got the crunch of the chicken and then you have the different textures and flavor profiles of the onions so the one that gets cooked is a little sweet a little astringent and then the fresh ones are that fresh onion and then you have the crispy which is adding that crispy textured element that Maillard element it's amazing so yeah at Eastside Mario was on the line you'd have hot side fry grill 
stove, pasta, apps and starters, sandwiches, wraps, and then you had garmanger. They didn't call it that at a franchise um, corporate place like this, but... They had a side called pizza salad. And pizza salad was like a starter position. They were almost their own entity. We were two different groups. Like there was the line and then pizza salad. Pizza salad is where you started and you worked your way out into the line. But low key, pizza salad was hard as fuck. Because at East Side, salad is complimentary, it's on the house. So people are ordering salad after salad after salad. So whoever's on salad is just getting smashed the whole shift. And pizza was touchy because the pizzas were time-based and they took like more time. They took quite a bit of time. So they were finicky. And if you worked pizza, you also had to work dessert. And dessert was easy as shit, but kids cones were not. And kids cones were a free dessert in this, <laughs> these three little cones that you put into this fucking, this cone holder, and the cones were suspended in the air by this cone holder. And the ice cream was hard as shit, and super hard to scoop and make nice. You were always just busting kids' cones. Wasn't that easy of a position? Then again, no position in a restaurant is easy when you have anywhere from 200 to 300 seats and a kitchen consisting of six guys, seven guys. So you're just getting lit up the entire time. But I will say this, the perk of kitchen work, especially if you're poor. I mean, you're gonna be poor because you're working in the kitchen. Is when you're broke ass, you at least know that like, you don't really need a food budget for life because you can always eat a bunch of times at work. during work and you can make something at the end of the night to take with you home especially in a corporate place if it's a very successful chain venture franchisee the margins allow for the staff to be kind of taken care of in that sense. If it's small and independent, you'll get staff meal. Most usually. That's kind of like a family, team building, team bonding type thing. But also the restaurant looking after you in terms of satiation.
I make you feel appreciated. It's crazy to me to think back to the restaurant families I've been part of. Always such an interesting life experience. Taking on all these new personalities and characters that you all like interweave and start to know each other. And there's like a family. It's like there's kind of beef. It's like I love you, but like you stress me the fuck out. And like here's where we don't meet eye to eye, but we have to work together. And like, but I do kind of like you. It's very much like that. Which is highly interesting. And like I said in previous video, I remember everybody from my previous work experiences in that like family of shedding. And at east side, we had this one dude named Damien. He was in his mid, mid to late 20s, mid 20s. He started as a server and he moved into management. So he was a key holder. Responsible to close. He was a partier, big time, drinking, sniffing, everything, smoking, heavy smoker, tall, white as they come, string bean man, uh, flamboyantly gay. And we did in fact call him Damien at times, but it was all love, like we love Damien, he was the best. And uh, when he got into a position of power, when the GM has gone home and everything and he's in charge, being the partier that he was, and all of us, like so many people in the industry, we're just, it's party time. You're young, everybody's drinking smoking drugs and shit and you'd stay after shift like on a weekend or closer to the weekend thursday friday <laughs> saturday sunday <laughs> five days a week and you post up at the bar after shift lights down and you guys all just start drinking either at a reduced rate or completely free on the company. And we would have full on 15 to 20 people staff parties to where we'd end up smoking inside the restaurant times where the sun started to come up and people are like, I'm supposed to work today. <laughs> Cab home, get like three hours of sleep, come back for 10 o'clock, 10.30 to open for 11. Just stupid. <laughs> but 
but also interesting and fun as shit. Chaotic, hectic, but getting to know people like very deeply. Deep drunk chats, chats. Making, making friends. Anybody who's working the restaurant in this capacity, you know what I'm talking about. But yes. This was a personal like staff meal that I created because you had free reign of the kitchen when you made a meal. It's like anything and everything goes. All the way from like ribs and chicken fingers and all that shit or pastas or sandwiches or salads or pizza. So you just had free range of everything. And uh, I was like, I loved this mild sauce. They have this mild, that's like what I fashioned th this sauce after. It was like a sweet heat. <laughs> sauce for the chicken fingers so I used to go grab chicken fingers out of the bag hook those off get the sauce and then I'd have a, head over to pizza salad grab a, a dough in the tray and just do it up with the different cheeses the onions I used to use caramelized onions because they were pre-made for the day and then, yeah, basically this exact thing, but with chicken fingers from the bag and the fryer. And they were really good chicken fingers, too. And then there was goat cheese for this pizza station. I just fully got addicted to this combination. Because it is incredible. I promise you, if you make this, you're going to like it. If you're into, like, the type of things that are on this. If you don't like, you know, mild heat barbecue sauce, you're not going to like it. But if you're into that, make this. Goat cheese, unbelievable. You can make it with chicken, chicken fingers. You don't have to do what I did with the chicken. You could just, like, cook up some store brand chicken fingers real quick, cut those up, add it on. Trust me, you're going to like it. All right, that's it. Perfect eat and uh, nostalgia. Till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well. Try this shit. Stay true.